Okay, so where we left off at the last video, we added our pins to the map, and you can see that here. Those pins are loaded via JSON. If we zoom in on those pins, here they are. And then we also added a secondary details screen to add a, another pin to the map. And you fill in the title and the description, and that was working well. What we needed to add was the location for the user when they add this pin. So when you add this pin here, let's just type in something here, save the pin, the pin would then get added to the screen. However, we're not saving the user's location, so that pin is not being added. Now let's talk about how to get the user's location. So if you go to your details view controller where we're going to be interested in that user's location, the first thing that we need to do is import the core location module so that we can start using that. Okay, so once we have that, what we then need to do is add a member to our class. We say var location manager of type CL location manager. And let's make that optional. And then in our view did load, let's start acquiring that information because we want to start up the GPS as soon as we can. So location manager, we have to instantiate this. CL location manager, parentheses for a default constructor. Location manager dot, and we're going to set the, the delegate to ourselves. And so when this comes back, we want to say, let us know when you get an update for the user's location, and then the user, uh, the location manager will return that as a delegate method, which we'll implement right after this. So again, this class is going to act as the location manager's delegate, and it's going to complain that this class does not implement that particular protocol. So saying it can't set that type to CL location manager delegate, and the way that we fix that is we add that protocol here, and we're saying that the details view controller, the current class that we're in, implements the CL location manager delegate. There it is. Select it. That error will go away. And now we have to implement a few of these delegate methods. So start this off with NUFC, FUNC, space, and then we're going to do location manager, and that's going to bring up this autocomplete. And we're interested in this one, actually these top two, so we're going to choose this one, and then I'm going to type that again, FUNC, location manager, and did fail with error, just in case an error happens. If you don't implement this function, your application will crash, so make sure we have that. And for this one, I should do some error handling, but for this tutorial, I'm just going to put this together and spit it out onto the console. For this one, we are interested in the location. This comes back as an array, and so what we can do is we can say the current location is going to equal this locations array, but I only want the first one out of it. The next thing I want to do is pull out that location coordinate and put that as a current location for our class. And so I want to be able to access this variable outside of this function. So let's bring it up to make it a class member. So the way that we do that is we're going to delete that. Actually, I'm going to copy this whole section here, then delete the let, put it up in the members here, paste that in, and this is actually going to be of type uh, CL location. There it is. And so we're going to save this one out, and let's just typecast this is going to remind me that it's not the right type. So this is of type CL location coming out of that array. Good idea to double check that value and make sure it is indeed coming out as an array. Uh, what's the error here? Oh yes, uh, no, so we actually want to make sure that this is the self version of this current location. Oh, 
Oh, okay, since I'm doing an assignment, sorry about that. Um, I have to change that to var, and that did it automatically for me. So here we go, and the next error is... Okay, yeah, let's just get rid of the typecast. So, oh, okay, it is defined. The array is actually defined as a bunch of CL locations, so we don't have to explicitly typecast that. Perfect. Okay, so now when, let's put a breakpoint here, when the core location manager updates the location, this method will be called, and what we're going to do is then store that in a class member of our class here, and then when the user taps on the save location button, we're going to grab the text out of the title text field, we're going to grab the description out of the description text field, and we're going to create a new map pin from this, and uh, instead of using the coordinate for the user location here, we are going to actually grab it from the classes, so we can use the self keyword if we want, current location. Okay, and so what has to happen, and you need to check this before that happens, let's uh, delete that self uh, real quick so that we're using Oh, I'm sorry. So it's asking for a coordinate. We're giving it a location, so we need to pull out that coordinate from it. So I was trying to get ahead of myself. So the next thing we have to do is get that coordinate into our constructor to add our pin. But what I was saying before is we have to make sure that this method gets called first. And so we don't want to make we don't want to have current location equal to null and then try to make a pin out of it because that won't work. Um, so you would normally do that. I'm going to actually skip that part because it's going to take a little bit too much time. But one method that you might want to do is have an if statement just to check to, for null. If it is null, pop up a message to the user and saying, we can't acquire your latest location. Try again later. Or just sit there and wait for that location manager to come back. And then maybe after a second or two, then pop that up. So a little bit of error handling. That'll make a better user experience. but. Just for this demonstration purposes, we're concentrating on the location manager. Now if I run this, this is not going to work because what we have to do is we have to set up our location manager to start recording the, or start requesting the updates. So start updating location. This will turn on the functionality to start Go and grabbing GPS locations. Now this is going to use a lot of battery power, so if you're not using it, you can always turn it off. And we'll do that right here. So we're going to start updating the location so that hopefully we have it by the time that the user is done filling out the form. And again, you probably want to handle this in a little bit better manner, but just for illustration purposes. And then we're going to turn it off right before we dismiss the view. So location manager. stop updating location. Perfect. And the second thing that we might want to do is maybe maybe uh, get some a little bit more accuracy. So by setting this, this will update the accuracy that of the GPS coordinates that are passed back to us. So these are our constants. So we start that with the K and we can do uh, location accuracy and well this is a map location so let's try to just do let's do nearest 10 meters you can do best accuracy if you want that'll use a little bit more battery power to acquire that GPS location uh, I don't really need it that specific so let's just do 10 meters that's fairly good for this purpose here alright so once we have that refined when we launch this details view so namely the second view uh, and actually, let's see what's... Oh, has no initializers. Uh, let's make this optional as well so we don't have to initialize that from the get-go. And... Okay, since we made that optional, we gotta then do that. Double click on the fix it, and that'll unwrap our optional because we set the question mark up there. Okay. Uh, I think I'll have a, a totally uh, separate video just to talk about you know the differences between the question mark and the exclamation point and everything like that. Uh, but for now, just follow what Xcode suggests and you should be okay.
uh, definitely recommend diving deeper into that concept. Okay, now this will all work except for one thing. We have to ask the user of the device permission to access their, their location. And so what we'll do is in the info plist, which is an XML file, and this view is representing that XML file in some key value pairs with a type of, you know, whatever the type is, whether it's a string, a Boolean, or a dictionary. What we want to do is make sure we have this privacy, location, always usage description. And the way that we get that, I didn't just memorize all of that, if we delete this and we type in privacy, and we hit the down arrow, we can see all of the privacy settings. And so if I filter that out by continuing to type out privacy, space, dash, space, and then location, we can get the location attributes here that we can then put the location in. So uh, let me expand this a little bit so we can see what we're looking at. So this one, always use this description. This is the one that I actually want. Uh, there's also ones for in-use description, so letting the, asking the user permission when the feature is needed. Um, I'm just going to say I'm going to always use the user's location. That's going to be a string. Xcode fills that type in for us. And then we give the user a reason why we want their location. You know, we could say something like, I want to add pins to your location. Okay, hit enter. And I do believe that's all we have to do. So let's compile that by hitting fan R, switch over to our simulator. Okay, and then I'm going to make sure that we stop at the right point here on our details uh, view controller. I have the breakpoint there, that's great. And I want to make sure that there's a breakpoint here as well so we can step through that when I hit that that save location button. So I'm going to type in the title goes here and hitting tab in the simulator actually works so the description goes here. Okay and then we hit that save which will trigger our breakpoint and I forgot to uh, this actually needs to get fired here so uh, the location current location didn't get fired so I'm wondering if that actually exists so we have title. Um, now let me just hover over this guy. Maybe I have to click in here. Sometimes the debug doesn't come up. Okay, so our that's what I what I figured. So our current location is actually nil, which means that the uh, location did not pop up. Yeah, and it should ask me that anyway, so let's debug this for a second. Go back to our view controller, details view controller. Ah, okay, I forgot one more thing. It, it didn't pop up the message to ask me for permission, and so what I need to do is I need to let the operating system know that I'm ready to ask for permission. Back in the back past, when we used to implement this functionality, the when you implemented that info plist setting, and it was actually a little bit different, it would pop up and say, as soon as the application launched, it would say, do you want to give the access to your GPS location to this application? And the user would say yes or no. You never got the chance to explain why. The app never launched. And so they've kind of streamlined this process to have that pop up whenever you want. And so I want it to happen when we hit the details view controller in this case. So what we have to do is do request always authentication or authorization, excuse me. And the other one that I was talking about with that info plist setting is when in use authorization. So since we did the plist always authorization, we'll select that one. Now I rerun the application and it should pop up that request. And it'll only do that once. So if you rerun the application, we don't always have to keep asking the user for permission. It'll just remember. So add location, and here we go. It executed that line of code that I just added, and it says, do you want to give access to your location even when you are not using the app? And that's the difference between that always author authorization and the in-use authorization. So only ask for as much permission as you need. Don't ask for too much because there's always a chance that the user will say, no, we want it to 
do it. So we're going to say allow. And here's our kickoff for our did update locations. And if we look at this, this um, array it has one value in it. If we look at that value, at the first index, we have CL location with a nice memory location, 64-bit location, of course. And um, it's an object. And actually, it's not going to print this out. But if I hit the I, it should give us a nice description of that. And instead of just giving you text, this will give you a nice map view, so which is pretty cool. If you want the text, uh, you can always look at what would be printed out to the console. But I love the quick view, which is what that eye is. And you can see exactly where this should be going. And if we zoom out here, it is on the peninsula here. Okay, so that's where the current location is, is getting reported as, and that's going to come from the simulator. So let's go play through that. And it's going to hit this a couple times. And let me just remove that breakpoint, hit the play button. Okay, so here it is. Now we know in the background that we have the current user's location. So let me type this in again. Okay, now when we hit that location, or hit that save location button. We can grab the title out of it, the description, and if we look under self here, we can see our current location actually has a memory address, again a 64-bit memory address. We drop this down, and again it doesn't really show us too much, but we can right-click on that, say print description, and it'll put it here, and actually did not give me a very nice description. Um, but we can say no, that's not going to help us out. Okay, well, in the debugger, I could always go in here and, again, do that. Oops, it's not going to cooperate with me. Well, I, I showed it the first time, so we'll just uh, assume it works here. We know that current location is that same memory address and the same value. We're going to create that map pin. Step over that. And so the map pin now should be... Uh, Let's see, I don't think this will come up with anything. Nope, just gives us some generic information. And the description method is not implemented, so we just get the type and the memory address, which is not very useful. Some classes implement that function, but not all of them do. So, Okay, so then we're going to add to the map view, which should be instantiated from our previous video. And um, then we're going to stop the location manager from updating. And then finally, we're going to dismiss that secondary view, which currently looks like this. Okay, and there's our new pin that we've added to our map using the GPS location of the user. And you can change that by going up to debug location while your simulator is selected and entering in a custom location. So let's actually change it to here. And you can see that it's going to now move to our... Um, a made-up location, but it happens to be very similar to where the pins are. Sorry about all the clicking, but normally you would do a set region on your map view to zoom in on this. And so that's the location that I set, and if you wanted to, you can go ahead and change that again uh, by changing these values slightly. Um, that actually might be too much. Let's change that to a 4. And sometimes you might have to change these back and forth. Or did you get that to update? But there you have it. You saw what, what that can do. Let's zoom out again, holding down the option key on our simulator. There's the map that we originally, or the pin that we originally added. And that's how you hook up locations and GPS to your map.